Welcome back to VTU eShikshana program. I am Prabhavati, Associate Professor from BNM Institute of Technology, Bangalore. I am discussing different topics in Module 4 and uh, in Advances VLSI, that is uh, 21 EC 71. In the previous uh, sessions, we have discussed the procedural constructs and the different statements such as loops, different for loop, while loop in the previous sessions. And also we have discussed uh, different routines that are available in uh, system very long, such as task and uh, function and how they are going to be better with the system Verilog compared to Verilog. Today uh, in this particular session, we are going to discuss how to write the test bench in system Verilog and how it is going to be different from what we write in Verilog. All of you might have undergone a preliminary course for this particular subject in HDL languages. And also you have done uh, module design in Verilog and as well as you have simulated by writing the test benches for those modules. And uh, now uh, the question may arise, why we have to discuss the same thing once again? It is in different scenarios we discuss this particular uh, topic of connecting the test bench and the design. What we have done in the previous, uh, previous course is that the modules that we designed was uh, something small in size with few, uh, uh, fewer inputs and very few outputs and uh, some of them were combinational and some of them were sequential or synchronous designs. And uh, with those uh, type of say inputs and outputs, it was easy to test connecting or listing every signal in the test bench. So it was not at all a problem while dealing with modules such as adder and uh, multiplexer that to 4 is to 1 or 2 is to 1 multiplexer. Now it happens in a test bench, what we are going to test is that we are going to apply different stimuli we observe the responses and we will prove the correctness of the module by observing the responses. And if required, we will go back to the design and then correct the design if required. Otherwise, we will mark it as a progress and if it is in a hierarchical design, if there are number of modules to be designed, so then we mark the progress with the completion of this module and move on to the next module. But the problem in real world is different, that is the scenario is different in the sense that we have very practical situations where the modules are going to be having hundreds and hundreds of signals. If I consider a processor design with 64 bit data and say 64 bit of address and if it is going to be running and connecting all the other uh, blocks of the processor design or a computer design, say for example memory <coughs> or say for example if it is interacting with the control block and if the data movement happens between memory and the processor or the register and the processor, all the 64 bit sig and the signals have to be listed again in the processor design and in the memory design and in the register and also in control block if required. So this is a very complex scenario that means you need to list all of them and while listing if we miss any of them it is going to be error prone. Most probably the design is going to fail, forget about testing it with the test bench. In such scenarios, we have to have a common way of connecting all the design blocks with the same set of which are interacting with the same set of signals with the help of uh, some advanced feature that is supported by both the language and the compiler and as well as the simulation tool. So we will be looking at such scenarios and before that we will also look at <coughs> 
some of the designs okay, which are going to be run with only the test bench and we will alter the test bench and then we will see how it is going to be better. Uh, system Verilog as we have seen in the previous sessions offers many language features and uh, there is one inter, uh, feature which is going to be a definition of an interface and that is going to be very helpful in uh, creating test benches. And also there is an another scenario which I have to now uh, mention here. Uh, if we are working in the industry or if you happen to work in an industry, there the designs are going to be either the protocols or the different uh, uh, data processing blocks, either audio one or video signals or it may be just a processor with some advanced features or you may have something like a graphics processor or you may have something a GPU that has been designed for AI applications. In such scenarios, the design is going to be done by the set of engineers who are called design engineers and the verification is carried out by another set of engineers who are called verification engineers. In a scenario like that, the purpose of uh, design engineers or the intent of the design engineers is to meet the requirements which are given in the design specifications. And the verification engineer has to check whether those requirements are met or not by creating different scenarios in which the design is going to work. Now the thing is if the companies are smaller and the design blocks are uh, medium to small and in such cases one engineer can wear the hat of both a design engineer and a verification engineer. But in complex designs it is not so. In such cases what the design engineer has done has to be understood by the verification engineer. If not he has to have a way of understanding what the design is doing. Okay and how the signals are connected in the design and he can then create the scenarios as per the requirements and then test the design and uh, mark it as verified or not verified or raise if issues if there are any violations with respect to timing and with respect to the signal required signal levels. So to do so in such cases we have to have way of presenting the design which is uh, something independent of how the design is made okay. and the verification need to understand only that and he need not look at the complete design but carry out the design verification at his own pace and he can also plan what he is going to be the verification strategy. In such scenarios, the test benches are going to fail in the sense that uh, mentioning each and every signal and mentioning the interconnection of those signals between different blocks of the design and to mention it in the top level design, it is going to be very tedious and the whole process is going to be error prone. In such case, again we look for a solution where this task is going to be made easier and that is where we now look at how such large complex designs will be specified to the verification engineer and how the verification is going to be carried out. So we will look at both the scenarios for small design, how to write the test bench with an interface and without an interface and how to carry out the verification just at the signal level and if you are good enough you can move up to the different uh, transaction level and you can also look at some bus transaction levels as well as you can move on to the next system level transactions. So we will see how this is going to be done and in this background we will now look at the different contents of this particular topic that is uh, one by one if we go through this. 
separating the test bench and the design, the interface construct and how to tying the different stimuli and then interface driving and sampling and we will now look at using these interfaces and some other advanced features of verification using say monitor and scoreboard, we will see how the system Verilog uh, assertions are going to be put forth. So, with this we will now move on to the different topics under this. <coughs> so, first we will consider separating the test bench and the design which all of you might have done in the previous semesters. So, this is what I was telling you how to look at the test bench, uh, how to separate the test bench and the design. We need to look at in uh, dif uh, look at this particular process of separating the test bench and the design in different scenarios ok. Like in the chair of a designer and from the chair of verification engineer. And we should also look at small designs versus large designs that is how a test bench is written for the design. And also we should have a, a, an idea of what is the complexity of the design. And in all these backgrounds we need to look at Verilog as a solution for writing the test bench and also we should look at system Verilog and we need to now find out which is going to be better and what are the different system Verilog features that is something will work as an advantage over Verilog. So, System Verilog actually offers an interface construct and uh, this is something part of all the test benches in System Verilog and it is a new paradigm for modeling abstraction that is without looking at the design, without looking at the abstraction, we can list what is the interface between the design and the external world. And use of interfaces is going to simplify the task of modeling. Please notice this, it is even in modeling that is at the design level and also in verification, in verifying large and complex designs. So, the steps to verify the design as I said previous, previously. We need to generate the stimulus and then capture the responses and we need to find out whether it is correct or not and then measure the progress as we move in the design hierarchy. And the test bench wraps around all uh, the whole of the design and it mimics the real world and environment around the design. So, it is something like the stimuli that are given which are in the test bench and sometimes it may be something outside that list of stimuli that we have give listed in the test bench and that is the problem that it is going to create when it comes to verification. We will see in the coming uh, discussion how this can be solved. Notice that there are some scenarios which will actually happen in the design or with respect to the design and there are few things which are not happening but we will enforce them in the test bench and if the test, bench, uh, test case is going to fail uh, with respect to the responses then we may assert something drastic with the design that the design is not working. Actually the design is working. And we are actually forcing some scenario which may not happen in the real world. And this is what is to be avoided when it comes to complex design. And in such scenarios, we will see how the test bench, the conventional one is going to fail. With examples, we will see how. So, here is a design 
where uh, we have a memory block okay, and it has the signals as uh, shown here. We have a clock signal, we have the address. Since it is a memory, it should be referred with an address and we have the write and read signal which can be asserted as a read bar write. Okay. And then we have an 8 bit of write data and we have an output okay, of R data which is again 8 bit. Now this module of memory design, it uses all of this and in the statements which are followed after this, we will write uh, the statements uh, pertaining to how the write uh, read is asserted, operation is asserted and at that time how the address is going to be taken and how the write data happens, okay, uh, sorry, read data happens and how it is put on the read data bus, okay. And uh, if the module is doing those things, we will now have the test bench and the common components of the test bench are the top uh, module where I have listed all the signals. You can see whatever that I have listed here as input and output, they have been listed as wire and reg, okay. Here it is not taken reg, okay, but you can have a registers corresponding to any of the output. And then we have to have compulsorily in a test bench a DUT in an instance of the DUT where again the design is going to be, I can say it is reiterated with respect to the different signals and we can follow either uh, naming by position order or we can refer to the names themselves. And uh, this we will call uh, by an arbitrary name and in this case it is going to be DUT and I can call it as M1, M2, M3 instance uh, in different scenarios. Now I will write after this, I have to write the different test cases with respect to the signals. I have to initialize them to 0 or 1 as required and then I have to force the values and this happens to be the set of stimuli that is given to this particular instance, a memory instance and then we will see what is the response of that and then we can look at the responses and then determine the correctness of the design. So, it so happens that it is exactly same as shown in the figure. I have this design under test which is my memory block and I have the test bench written with all the signals in the list as inputs and outputs which are going to be interpreted as wires and reg uh, uh, scalars and then scalars or vectors okay and then you see that the test bench wraps around the design okay and then it is going to assert whether the design is correct or not by the specification or the set requirements. So it is exactly like this, so the test bench and the DUT they work with the same clock signal if at all they have a clock okay and I have the same memory design I, which I had shown. We will connect the address write enable read enable which is uh, write underscore rd in our uh, module and then write data which is a uh, input w data and then r data which is going to be the output and that is asserted by the test bench. So, if you notice here, there is a one to one connection between the DUT that is design under test and the test bench with respect to all the signals. 
irrespective of whether they are input or output. So, each one of them have to be connected between test bench and DUT. So, this is the requirement of separating the design and the test bench. So, if this is exactly how we have learnt in the first step uh, to test a particular design and it works fine with a small design, not a problem at all. We can continue with the same thing. We can use either the Verilog or VHDL or system Verilog for this particular purpose. Okay? And what happens if the design is growing? So, you can look at some other examples of the designs. We will move on from
the body of the module and you can end the module ok. So, it actually provides the flexibility in that the same module can be used in multiple ways with different interfaces connected to that module. So, here is the flexibility uh, part that is going to coming uh, going to be as an advantage. So, with all this we will now look at the same design arbiter now with a interface ok. With an interface uh, maybe with a clock ok, we will see how to dis define a clock in an interface and outside and inside the interface. And as you see the test bench talks to the design only through interface and it does not wrap around the design as we have seen with the help of a test bench. It does not happen here with interface and the interface construct is allowed or supported only with system Verilog. So, the same design arbiter with the request grant global signals reset and uh, clock ok. And this time <coughs> uh, here is our design and uh, it has been named uh, very uh, differently as you see it is an arbiter with interface and I am declaring the port list only with the interface ok and that is declared here ok. Notice here it has input bit clock and uh, logic that is grant and request which is of different width and uh, that is going to be 2 bit and I have separately listed bit reset that is RST and uh, since I have not specified the direction by default it is going to be input and end interface. So, notice here the keyword interface and end interface and notice the name of this interface which is arb underscore if and that has been instantiated here with the module definition and it has been called by a name arbif arbif. So, it is an instance of this interface in the module arbiter that is arb underscore with interface that is ifc. So, rest of the part of design is going to be the same ok, but the signals are going to be referred with respect to the interface as you see uh, arb if is my interface instance. I refer to that and connect to the signal in that interface with dot rst with dot grant and the dot request ok and uh, the rest of the module is written and the, the behavior is same as we have written earlier. So, now I write the test bench here also I write the test bench with the interface and I create another instance of the same interface arb underscore if ok and I call it by the same name arbif ok and now I refer to the clock of the design from the through the interface that is arbif dot clk that is my clock and I will now uh, display depending upon different scenarios whether it is going to be Draw, uh, driven or the grant is given with success or error anything depending upon what is going to be the request and how the grant is going to be given. And of course, I am doing the same thing I will mark the system time and then uh, replicate it in my display statement ok. So, this is how the test bench and the module are written as you see both of them are talking through the interface ok 
and how my uh, top level design is going to change. So, just look at this. I have the same instance of the design that is ARB with IFC, test with IFC and I create the instance of that with the instance of the interface A1 and T1. But what is different here is that now, I uh, declare the instance of the interf uh, interface so that the context is built okay, properly with the design and the test bench. So, it does not refer to any other signal uh, apart from what is declared in the interface that is clock reset request and grant and it does not look at different values of the signals other than declared type which is bit and logic. So, in this case this looks as a very clean interface between or what you say the channel or the communication path between the test bench and the design. So, this is the advantage and this type of interface construct is supported in system very log. Okay. So, as you see this is slightly different from what we have written without an interface and the arbit uh, advantages of this is very clear. It is a very clean and uh, less prone to mistakes okay. and if it is required to add a new signal in the interface you add it to the interface and do not replicate it either in the test bench or in the module and there is no need to change the module such as the top okay and which is actually passes the interface through okay and the feature of this system very log greatly reduces the chance of the wiring errors that means uh, connecting any signal in a some other part of the design or naming them differently so, such errors are going to be avoided. So, the example that we have discussed here uh, is something uh, in, an interface with a single clock connected to a generator at the top level. Okay. But if your design requires, there may be scenarios where uh, your design or uh, your design may require multiple clocks or uh, the different blocks in the design hierarchy use different clock signals. Okay. In such scenarios, you need to represent them as uh, represent them uh, other signals inside the interface. That means, list them as clock 1, clock 2, clock 3 in interface. Okay and connect the interface to the clock generator. Okay. So, maybe clock 1, clock 2, clock 3. So, here is an another example how an interface definition is going to be used. Uh, I have two examples here. Okay. Uh, the interface is main underscore bus, look at the list of the signals that are going to be used and the signals. Okay. And I am going to use in the top level just by mentioning the interface here and creating an instance of that particular inst uh, interface. And you can uh, declare as you see other than the signals in the interface that is clock reset n and test mode okay uh, that may be there in the interface or it may not be there okay and what we have done here is that we have referenced them in the top module that is the signals in the interface definition with the names that is dot clock is going to be the clock of the interface, dot reset in is going to be the reset n of the uh, interface and test mode underscore mode is the test underscore mode of the interface. 
But if the names are going to be lengthy or sometimes too many, then I can simply use star okay, to connect that particular signal from the interface. Please notice even the here also the top module is being written, but it is written differently using the same interface mean underscore bus. Okay. But the thing is that I am not referring to them by name and I will just refer to them as the signals that has been declared in the interface. So, this is going to be more convenient if too many signals and too long names are going to be there. And here is an another interface definition. So, here you see this is also the main bus interface, the same signals have been repeated and here I have shown how the top level is going to uh, use <coughs> the main bus ports here okay? and the instance of the main bus is being uh, used here and also there is another way uh, where the main bus ports are going to be used. Okay? So, you can see <coughs> Uh, the test generator is going to use the same main bus ports okay? and I have the module processor okay? which is also using the main bus interface and there is a slave which is connected to processor that also uses the same main underscore bus and you can re replicate that in an another design which is a RAM design. And here also I use the same main bus interface. So, you can see here how easy it is when there are so many designs, all of them will refer to the same interface and just by mentioning that in the module, I am replicating the whole set of the signals associated with the interface. So, this looks very cool and very flexible and uh, this is what I say as the real advantage of using interface in system Verilog.